Okay, welcome to Bio Statistics One. Uh, this is our topic today is study designs. We're going to discuss about different types of studies in biostats. So our main objective is to list and also define the component of a good study design. We're also going to compare and construct observational and experimental study designs, summarize the advantages and disadvantages of alternative study design. So we have two types of study designs, observational and also experimental. In observational studies, we also have what we call the case report or case series. We also have, we also have a cross-sectional, uh, which sometimes we call the prevalence studies because uh, we, this study is based on a point of a time, not a duration. There's no duration on it. And then case control studies, which involve the case and also the control. Then we have the core studies. So our main objective is to go through all these observational studies and also the difference between them. Then experimental studies, we're going to discuss it by the clinical trial, which use the randomized control. So first we start with the observational studies. One thing we know that once a study objective or research questions has been refined or established, which we know is not an easy task, and it normally involves extensive discussion among investigators, also review of literatures, that is the past studies, and also an assessment of ethical and also practical issues. After this has been resolved and we have our study objective and plans, the next step is to choose the study design to most effectively and efficient that will answer our study question. So again, we have different types of study design. Now the study design is the methodology or the techniques that can be used first to collect our information or data that will address our research questions. So this is where we will discuss different types of, again, study design. And there are so many terminologies here, but again, we may go explain this as time goes on. So first, observational studies. Uh, here we say it's observation studies. So our goal is that we're going to do a studies and we are going to observe if there will be any intervention, we're going to observe the outcome of it, the cause and effect of it. So observation is inferences limited to description and association with careful design analysis that can make stronger inferences. Here we are going to use our start adjustment. Experimental studies will be based on the cause and effect. But again, in all studies, we need to be careful of the definition of our disease, which is the outcome, and also the exposure, which will be the risk factor. This is again by start class, more or less like epidemiology course. We have a risk, and what is the outcome of the risk? So everything will be based on the association or the, if there's any association relationship or causal relationship between a risk factors, the environment or any input, and the out outcome, which would be the disease or the any outcome. So first we will go through our, which design is the best, will be depend on the study design, the study question, uh, the current knowledge on the topic, how common is disease and the risk factors and how long will the study takes. Uh, for example, the cohort studies cost a lot because cohort studies, the goal is to study a group of our subject within some period of time. So it takes time and also the cost. So we may do the comparisons between them. So first we start with the case report or case studies. First case report or case series studies is an observational study. 
So case report will be the detailed report of a specific features of a case. And case series will be the systematic review of a common features of a small number of cases. Again, that's why it's called case series. So again, a case report is a very detailed report of a specific features of a particular participants or case. And case series, again, is a systematic review of the interesting and common features of a small collection or series of cases. One thing is that this type of studies are important in a medical field as they have already historically served to identify new disease. So case series is very good in a medical field which helps us again identify a new disease. The case series does not include a control or comparison group. An example would be a series of disease and free participants. These studies are relatively easy to conduct, but can be critical as they are unplanned, uncontrolled, and not designed to answer a specific research question. So one of the advantages would be the cost efficient. We can see that in case report or case series, we don't control the studies. And we don't have a, a specific research question, uh, question, but it's very good studies because sometimes it helps to discover, again, new disease or new medical problems. So the advantage here will be the cost efficient. The disadvantage, of course, there's no comparison group, no specific research questions, no controls. So the simplest design, uh, the description of interest observation, a very small number of individuals. Uh, here we say usually case series do not involve control patients. As we said earlier, patients are free of disease, usually lead to generation of hypotheses for more formal testing. And the criticisms, or I would say the disadvantages, we don't, there's no any planning here. There's no any research uh, hypothesis. So an example can be an important case series was once published, I think somewhere in 1981, and the report on how five young homosexual men who sought medical care with a rare form of pneumonia and other unusual infections. This led to the discovery of HIV and AIDS. Here we have a, a young man, maybe somewhere earlier age, less than 30 years, so 20 to 30, and they have a rare form of pneumonia. Normally, the pneumonia uh, cases involve older people, a uh, young person to have it, and not one, two, but in this case, within a short period of time, we have at least five or more patients. So this, can, this is a case series or case report. And that's why we say one of the advantage of case report is discovery of new medical problems. And that was the study done, we called the Gottlieb 1981, 35 young homosexual men with a rare form of pneumonia and other unusual infections. The initial report was followed by more series so we have 26 cases in New York and also in California. Uh, we crossed it. In Southern California, 34 cases among Asians, etc. And the condition term in 1982 as is. So a very good example for case series, it can help us to, especially generating a new medical issues. Now, cross-sectional survey, more better. Advantage is that it's cost efficient. Why? Because observational studies is conducted at a point in time. At a point in time. An example would be, let's say we have a city, uh, let's say New Jersey City, and we are trying to conduct some medical tests between male, the age from 25 to 35, to see the effect of cigarette smoking. In this case, cross-sectional means I'm not going to monitor 
this man uh, for some period of time, how long they smoke to see the effect of the cigarette smoking. But I just want to know right at the moment. So I may take a data, make sure this man between the age 20 to 35, they have smoking at least five years. I'll take the data and see the outcome. How many of them have whatever disease I'm looking for, what percentage have it. So this is point in time. Now, the next one, which will be the cohort study, I may take the same group of people and I may monitor them for one year, 20 years, 10 years, etc., to see the effect of cigarette smoking and what will be the outcome. And I said different studies. So observational studies is conducted at a point, actually that's why it's called prevalence studies. It's conducted at a point in time, which is the cross-sectional studies. And cross-sectional studies also is called uh, the prevalence studies. So here is there an association between diabetes and cardiovascular disease. In this case, I'm going to take the data at a point in time. Uh, patients that have the problem, diabetes, and I'll see the result, how many percentage of this patient have the CVD problem. Now we also have the prospective cohort studies. Prospective means we are looking forward. So I may take a group of, again, based on what study I'm doing, a group of patients, and I will monitor them five years from now, one year from now. So that's why it's called prospective, look into the future. We also, the core study, we also have a retrospective. We know the outcome and we want to know the causes of it. So we go back in time. So again, core studies or prospective core studies is an observational study which involves a group called a cohort of individuals who meet inclusion criteria followed by pros prospectively in time for risk factors and outcome information. So advantage is that it can assess the temporal relationships. Temporal means time. We are looking at the time period. Disadvantage is that it need large number for rare outcomes and also there may be a co-founding. Co-founding variable will be a variable that may distort our relationship between the cause and effect. And this example of course said is the association between hypertension and cardiovascular disease. So we have core studies. We have the hypertension, no hypertension. And we find that some may have the CVD, some may not have, some may have, some may not have. But again, this will be depend on the percentage. But the concept here is that we are going to cohort. The main goal of core study is monitor the patients or the subject in the study group for some period of time. Whereas cross-sectional, we want to know the outcome at a point in time based on their past practices or their past environment and their behaviors. So core study will identify a group of individuals that meet inclusion criteria. Then we follow prospectively in time, then assess the exposure, then evaluate the outcome status. And this is why it's very expensive because it takes time. And sometimes we may have uh, some subjects that may, be, may not survive the period of the study, or they may, I will use the term attrition, or maybe they may move out of the studies, or they are no more interested in the studies. So this is one of the disadvantages. So include persons exposed and not exposed to risk factor at outset, usually persons are disease-free. Now can assess temporal relationship. Problem if disease is rare, that's a very small number. This is, this is so common. And also bias is less of an issue than in case control. Co-founding may be a problem. Again, co-founding variable is a variable that distorts the association between the input and output or the risks and outcome. So let me give an example of a co-founding variable to make it clear here. So let's say, for example, we have, uh, let's say in Arizona desert, during the summertime, 
the sale of ice cream goes high, there's more sales of ice cream. But at the same time, the snake bites, snake bites in apartments or houses also goes high. This does not mean that there's a relationship between snake biting and buying ice cream because if I get bite by a snake, most likely I will not buy ice cream. But there's association between the two. Or shark attack in the summer, it goes high in Florida. And also the sale of ice cream also goes high. So here we have a, a third variable that is causing this, which would be the weather. The temperature may very heat. When the temperature is very hot, snakes normally comes out of their hidden places, go out, or sharks also come close to the, uh, the ocean where people normally swim. So that would be the confounding variable here. So that's the whole concept. So we can see that a confounding variable will be a variable that would distort the true association between two variables, or in this case, the risk and also the outcome. So there's a study here, which we, this is one of the common studies, especially if you are taking a, a public health course like epidemiology or something. This is called the Fre Framingham Heart Studies. In these studies, we have 5,000 men and women enrolled in 1948. And this is a cohort studies. There are exams every two years for cardiovascular risk factors, uh, surveillance. Uh, the studies go with hearing, exercise, nutrition, neurologic studies. All these are studying the, the subjects, 5,000. And also 5,000 plus their offsprings and also the Aspasis enrolled in 1976, and the third generation enrolled in 2002. So this study is still going on. It's a very world famous heart study. The goal is that we want to know the factors that causes, example, will be heart attack or cardiovascular. Is it from genetics, our genes, or is it from our environment, or is it from our behavior? It can be a combination of all these three. So the exposure group here is common risk factors. General population, example, the, in the Framingham studies, the rare risk factors, uh, special exposure cohort, uh, let's say soldiers exposed to Agent Orange, that's another exposure group. Uh, comparison group and similar or, or other factors that may affect the outcome. Next, we go to the case control studies. Case control studies is almost like cohort. So sometimes we, many studies always have the hybrid. We combine both case control and cohort together. So case control means you have the case and you also have the control, which means you have the people with the cases, the problem, uh, whatever medical problem, and then the people or the patient with that, with with no problem. In this case, we want to monitor the two within a period of time and the intervention that will be given to see what the improvement will be. So observational study that involves individuals with cases, that's the patients that have the problem, and without the cases, we call them the controls, the outcome of interest. Advantage again is the cost and time efficient for rare outcomes. This study is good for cases that are very, very rare, or new cases. Disadvantage is that it needs a careful selection of cases and also controls. And we have to be careful of biases, and we have to remove bias. So this is example, is there an association between sleep position and sudden infant death syndrome? So we have a sleep plan, or that, then we have different sleep prom and others. So here we can say there is no sudden inf infant disease and death syndrome, or there's a sudden infant death syndrome. So we have those with, with it, those. So we're going to study these two groups and see. So the study starts from here. Both of them, these are the patients or let's say the infants with a problem 
with the seeds or sorry infant death syndrome. These are the babies with no sorry infant death syndrome. So we studied the group then from the quick camera. So select subject on the basis of the outcome. Case have disease and controls her free of disease. Then compare the growth with respect to proportion with history of exposure, possible causes. Then investigation is retrospective in time. So we go back, see why those who have it and why those who don't have it, what is their differences. So the next session we talk about sampling. Uh, well, anytime we are designing a study, especially in doing data analysis or in statistics, we're always going to do sampling because we cannot study the whole population. For example, we have a city with 3 million people and I want to study some disease. I don't want to take the data or do the survey of all the 3 million people. There's two disadvantages. One is the time. It will take a lot of time. And secondly, it will be involved a lot of money, the funds that will be involved. So most of the time, we always take a sample. Maybe I may take a sample of 1,000 from 3 million or 200 from 3 million. And the goal of taking your sample is the process of sampling. And the goal is that we always have to remove the biases. We, we may say that data have to be represented or representation of the data. So selection of cases, we need explicit definition to make cases as homogeneous as possible. So I've named men between the age of 20 to 30 that practice this behavior. So I will focus on that sample. Also debate over whether cases should be represent all persons with disease or specific sub subgroup limit inferences. The selection of controls should be comparable to cases, same exclusions. Uh, here we say controls represent non-disease persons who will have been included as case if they had a disease. So the features here will be retrospective design, cost and time efficient, uh, can get a sufficient number of cases useful for rare conditions, also can investigate a rare of exposures and it's best for disease with long latency. Uh, issues pertaining to case and control here, we say both exposure and disease have occurred. Now it's hard to establish temporal relationship. Selection bias can be a problem. Selecting cases of control or some dropouts, leaving groups not comparable. They may have dropouts. So. Then observational bias, knowledge of disease might influence reporting of exposure. Then recall biases, retrospective and long term. So next we move to the experimental study, which randomized controlled trial. In the experimental studies, one of the biggest advantages, there is no confounding variable. Because here it's like I'm in the lab doing the experiment. So there's no any third variable that will be sought. And also experimental studies will lead us straight to the cause and effect. What will be cause again here we are doing in the lab using the practical tools. So experimental study where patients are randomized to receive one of the several comparison treatment. Advantage is the gold standard from start point of view. Minimize biases and co-founding then that's the advantage. Possible remove biases and co-founding. But disadvantage, of course, is very expensive. But here we have to do the lab work and also requires extensive monitoring. Inclusion criteria can limit generalizability. So this is an example. Here we say it's a new drug effective in reducing hyperlipidemia which is the high total serum cholesterol. So here we say we have a sample randomized. We get uh, those taking the drugs and those are not taking it or placebo. 
we have a palipidemia, then no a palipidemia, the same a palipidemia, and no a palipidemia. And after this time, we may get so subject are randomized to one of the two or more treatment, one of each which may be controlled treatment. Then in the long run, treatment goes to be balanced <clears throat> in the no. In a norm, uh, here we saw sometimes it is, it's impossible to bring the participants, for example, when the treatment they compare a uh, medical versus surgical. <clears throat> but often it is possible to ensure that the people evaluating the outcome are unaware of the treatment. So this will lead us to four different phases of our research. And studies. So phase one, we always have to be concerned with safety. Uh, first time in humans, main object, objective to assess toxicity and safety in humans. Pharmaco, pharmacokinetics. And this usually involves 10 to 15 patients. Subjects are usually healthy. Some are pressable control. Phase two, we need to study the feasibility of the studies. So anytime we are doing studies, first of course the safety, those who are involved, the subjects, yeah. then the feasibility studies, maybe the cause and effect or the side effect and the adverse events, efficacy is important. So goal is to determine the optimal dosage. Then clinical trial we have to focus on efficacy also. Here data are collected to monitor the safety. Then the post-marketing. The post-marketing session is after the approval by the FDA based on efficacy proving start in two or more study, new drug application review within one year. And the focus will be effectiveness. So this is, again, the steps up to four different steps, process of, again, developing a drugs and new drugs. So this will be the conclusion of our lectures here. The main goal of this lectures, again, is to go through different types of studies. And the main, these studies also are used in epidemiology. The main studies, again, are the observational, and experimental. In observational, we discuss it by the core study, cross-sectional case series or case report. Experimental study, we talk about the randomized and also case control studies for observational. So again, wish everybody the best. Thank you. <laughs>